Now we've got uh, 10 minutes left for your own questions. Um, thank you everybody in the panel for sharing those ideas. I really find it fascinating how across Europe you have, you bring paradigms that are sharing the same ways of um, finding new forms of participation, collaboration, self-identities uh, for their institutions. I find that very uh, fascinating, which proves your point on the similarity by which this is happening across Europe, I think. Um, okay, so questions? more a reflection or a feedback uh, than uh, a real question, but maybe could be work for us for tomorrow. And uh, we have talked uh, talk about um, institution and how to create institution, about democracy, uh, about activism, and also artistic practice, and also the economic, uh, not as only financial, and so. We know, and so for me it's important now to understand something. I think we need a sort of concrete object for applying these uh, ideas, these also practices, and so this is the questions. This context, this context, this time, this meeting, this being here together could be an object so, um, uh, democracy is not um, a value, it's a practice. It's, a, it's a possible to practice uh, democracy in this context. We have a sort of um, uh, container, a uh, biennale for two years. It's very interesting. We are in Greece, I come from Italy. The political situation is very difficult. Uh, the struggles are uh, very in, in a bad situation, and we are all interested in what's uh, happening here. Uh, also, the relationship between movement and institution, and thinking that institution are not only the constituted institution, but also practice and processes. So, could the be... The question. No question. This is the question. Well, uh, there can you something to can I, excuse me, discuss, can I interrupt? Uh, can you, can you address? Um, there are a lot of big institutions, European institutions, and we have time, we have relationship. What can we do with these objects together for these two years, for practice these uh, themes? Um, thank you very much. Um, it was very informative. I'm going to be a little bit uh, old school um, in, in Marxist terms and ask um, where, where is the funding coming from, talking about the base and then the superstructure. And I'm not so much interested as for the funding from this, uh, for these particular institutions presented here. Um, in some cases, I, I already know. Um, I'm, I'm interested, broadly speaking, and because we had the, the other session on, on alternative uh, currencies and so on. I mean, is it really possible to produce different institutions um, if we keep being funded uh, by the same sources, which are either public capital or private capital? Let me put it this way. Thank you. Yeah, I. I I also would like to, to maybe follow up a little bit of what Elenia was saying. It, it seems to me that uh, it emerged uh, today a very large uh, degree of consensus about many things. Uh, there has been and there is also some issues of dissent. For example, the relation with technology would be one, but you know. Um, but say that tomorrow, or uh, after a discussion, we decide that there is a uh, space for boycotting the use of cell phones for three days, uh, you know, or something like that. Uh, where, where, uh, who are we talking to? So, institution building means uh, having an address, having like a place where 
a hub, a place where to locate the political process. And, and we don't have that. And it seems to me that the most important thing we could start doing now in Europe, after five years from 2011, where is exactly to build that. So the, the, so the question is, how can these different experiences here, these different, each one of us has something to contribute in terms not only of ideas, but his own organizations, his own visions, his own networks. How can we make this become an institution? Having two years of time to do that, having uh, possibly some, some resources to do that, having a venue that is Athens that is especially important for doing that, I, I feel an urge to do that, okay? Uh, I, I don't feel an urge to spend another day in structuring uh, little panels in which we are watching to, to say stuff in seven minutes or eight minutes or nine minutes. There are people from all over Europe here, from all over the world, with experiences. I, I, I feel a need of a kind of a more of a real assembly for coming up with a shared sense of what we are here for, whether we came here for spending two days at a conference, which is very lovely, but I don't think this is what we should be doing, and we should, we, I think we should have a different ambition. So I was wondering whether there is a, a shared feeling of this, and if there is, I think we should organize ourselves accordingly between now and tomorrow to, to do something. Amalia, can I say something about this, about the program tomorrow? Can I answer this? Okay. But we are doing this tomorrow. Uh, what Matei just uh, asked, this is what we are doing tomorrow. We're working tomorrow in groups in order to come up with something tangible. This is why you are here. It's here to address the public, but also to come together and work. And then we'll have an assembly later in the noon tomorrow. So ideally, we will have this. Sorry, I have a, a small remark. Um, in, uh, in the panel, there was a comment about uh, that we can change the world without taking power. There was not such thing uh, during any movement. As far as I know, uh, from experience, and also as far as I know, from uh, uh, history, because we talked about history, uh, the issue was not about if we can change the world without taking power. It was about changing the world, empowering ourselves and each other in order for that change to take place. So this is this kind of um, uh, recuperation of uh, rhetoric into, again, the rhetoric of we and the others and uh, we and them was sort of transformed into another language which is very difficult for us to, to talk about it because it's a momentary language, it's a temporary language, and it is a language that is created during action. It's not a language that is appropriate in order to negotiate with power is empowering, which is a different thing. And I think we should talk a little bit more about this, perhaps also tomorrow. And the other question I have and remark is regard to why new verticalities? Why new verticalities? Do we need new verticalities? Don't we have enough verticalities? So maybe um, we can start answering some of those questions. Leo, why don't you start with the last one? Because I think it was addressed to you. Well, I, I th hope that tomorrow we'll precisely explore this. Uh, I think that much of the discussion today 
uh, avoided the question of institution building in a way that actually moves from subversion and disobedience and local empowerment, micro empowerment in very small communities uh, to the question of transforming the society. Uh, and I don't think that can be avoided. I think what we are experiencing now in the eighth year of this crisis is a strong, and we're seeing it, Hillary was talking about it, is a strong sense that somehow we have to take the creativity that was exhibited from the factory occupations, the protests of the anti-globalization movement. I would hope there'll be a massive discussion tomorrow of the nature of the solidarity networks, solidarity networks in Greece, uh, which seem to be very absent today. Um, that we somehow have to connect that creativity, that anti-capitalist sensibility to the question of how do we go back to transforming the state. Well, that's what I hope would be discussed. Unfortunately, I think it's the case that as if you look around the world today, and you see it with Podemos, and you see it with the interest in Bloco, and you see it with, with something that hasn't happened in 50 years, 400,000 people associating themselves with a political party which was largely seen as reform. Fine, I, I think this, this, this would be a very good discussion. It would be a very, it would be even better if this discussion were uh, had with, uh, as, as I'm sure is the case with you, with people who uh, are embedded in the struggles in Greece. So those of us who've come here can learn from them uh, and not attempt to impose, and I, I say that very much about myself, uh, our understandings from elsewhere on a situation which is, is, has been uniquely creative and disappointing, uh, which we should learn from. Because it is the case that the movements here did connect themselves to a moment of attempting to go into the state. And what does that mean? What is the implications of that? Uh, I, I think in terms of this project, the, for artists, uh, Clearly, it's only going to succeed if the artists in question are themselves embedded in the movements, the local urban movements, that people are uh, engaged in here. Uh, and if this Biennale has artists who are not connected to this, have not been connected to it, then it seems to me the project has to become how do they connect to it in a living way? Right, not as abstract representation, but in a living way. <coughs> um, I could respond quickly to the um, why new verticalities question. Well, the, the workshop that we were mentioning was, um, wasn't just a utopian workshop. We were also dealing with dystopian situations. But I would argue that um, neither complete verticality nor complete horizontality are are desirable, the extremes of at either end. So it was more a, a question of, of um, how we kind of deal with a new mix of these terms. Um, but I would also argue that perhaps a complete horizontality brings in a new type of, uh, perhaps even a more oppressive kind of informal power. All right. So I, I want to um, relate a little bit to the last question, but link it to the others, so I'll try and be brief. So I, I want to just develop a distinction which is in the book, um, Change the World Without taking, taking Power, but develop it in a way which slightly uh, disagrees with Holloway's arguments. So he has this distinction between power to and power over. And I would just slightly develop that in terms of power as domination power over, power over government, power over capital, power over, you know, what power over people it could be. But I think there are lots of different ways, but power over. And on the other hand, power too, I'd interpret a little bit more 
um, well, a bit more substantively, as power as transformative capacity. And I'd say, well, the question, one question we have is, can power as domination ever be a resource for power as transformative capacity? And I'd say, well, it can, but only under certain conditions. Power over has, as, as, as John Holloway kind of specifies very clearly, and he was an author of this book called In and Against the State, so he was in as well as against. And, you know, the, the power over has got a dynamic of its own. This is what I mean by the logic of representation that can pull away from power as transformative capacity. But on the other hand, power's transformative capacity needs resources. You know, it needs funding. It needs redistribution. It needs the power exerted over capital. I mean, when I worked for the government of London, we had many cases where there was power as movements, power as transformative capacity against property speculation, against corporate power. And the, the state used its power over land to, um, to, to effectively socialize and destroy corporate power over inner city land so that the movements could have control over that inner city land near, near the River Thames and, and so on. So I think I if one sees it like that, then, um, then there is a, 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 a possible relationship between transformative power and power over power over power's domination. And I think in answer to the question about here, you know, what we, what I think that's one of the questions to discuss. I mean, in a way that, h how do we achieve that relationship between um, power transformative, power's transformative capacity in which, and power uh, as domination, in which the latter is a resource, not an oppression, source of oppression, but a resource for transformative capacity. And what does that imply? For both, and relating to the question of um, of address, an address, an institution needs an address. Well, surely we're now in a context where there are many addresses, and so the question is more: how, what new forms of coordination do we need? Like coordination has been through the state, but I think that part of building transformative capacity, power's transformative capacity, has got to be about building new forms of coordination. You know, in the metaphors, we've got networks, we've got horizontalism, but I mean, we need now need to give more content to those that issue of forms of coordination that don't become forms of domination. Oh, just one final thing. Uh, well, so no, I better not. No, okay. no, 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 no. Oh, no, you would. It's true. I, I kind of recognize, you know, th we spend most part of the day um, rushing through these brief presentations which were fascinating and fantastic thus far. But actually, how I could see them are the building blocks of understanding how can we, in a way, institute otherwise. And we cannot circum circumvent the notion of power there. And there are, there are people who can say much more about that. But I mean, what, what leads my thinking about that is what I represented about disparity of power and politics. We have so much politics in this room. Politics as capacity to think through solutions. But we lack power in many instances to implement those solutions. And for me, that's, that's kind of leading notion how to understand the notion of power. And again, it's not power over, right? So I do not know how, and I, I know, you know, and, and Angela will remember we talk about um, uh, art as a being prodigious producer of models, models of the self, models of history, models of society, but it forgot to live it, right? It forgot to embody it, to kind of realize the society it desires in a way. And I think that's the obligation we have, but it's not just embodying models in a way. It's a realizing that society we, uh, we, um, we desire. And I, I do think we need institutions for that, but institutions otherwise, in a way. Huh? What do we understand under institution? There I concur with Mal when he, uh, when he challenged the question, what do you mean when you say state? What do you mean when you say the market? What do you mean when you say power? And what on earth do you mean when you say art? Right? And the question is, how do we actually, from these building blocks of building understanding throughout the day,
create that possibility of implementing the models, implementing the worlds we, we imagine in a way. But that's, that's, that's the task and a question to the biennial, not to ourselves who kind of are delivering this kind of potential visions. Do I still need to answer the question about funding? Probably. It's, it's just diverts the conversation about the better world into kind of a reality and dirty stuff of the everyday. Funding for the projects of, uh, at BAC is uh, public funds, uh, national, international, transnational public funds. But it's not only about uh, resources in, in terms of uh, funds. Huh? It's resources uh, that we mutualize to a great extent with the academy, university, um, We will have to end the conversation now. Thank you very much for your participation. Um, Mrs. Hilary Wainwright wanted me to mention the Red Pepper magazines. Yeah, just some um, sample copies for free. Yes, yeah, free copies here. Um, next session is starting after a 10-minute break, um, right here. The Performing in the Political, uh, moderated by Mrs. Catherine Watson. Right?